Hey everyone, today I'm going to walk you through a couple of different workflows that you can use when using Luminar AI as a plugin for Lightroom Classic. Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today's topic is how to invoke Luminar AI from Lightroom Classic. Go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. Today we're starting off in Lightroom and I've got a really cool photo up on the screen and I want to show you a few different ways you can work with this image between Lightroom and Luminar. So the first option I would say is if you bring a photo into Lightroom, chances are you've probably made a couple of quick edits. So let's go over here to our basic tools and I'm going to change my white balance. We'll change that to a daylight white balance. We'll do a quick auto tone on this. And then let's say we want to take this to Luminar AI and work with it. Now the options here, we're going to go right click. We're going to go down to export. And under this category, here's our Luminar AI. We have the option of edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments or open source files. Editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments will send a TIFF to Luminar AI with those changes we just made in Lightroom. It'll take those over with us to Luminar AI. However, if you want to use Luminar as your raw processor, that's when you'd select open source files. You're going to get slightly different results whether you use Lightroom to convert your raw files or Luminar to convert those raw files. Let me go ahead and we're going to say open source files here really quick. This is going to open the raw image in Luminar AI and we can go ahead and do all of our edits from scratch right there in Luminar. Once we're done, we'll be able to click apply and round trip that back to Lightroom. I want to take a moment and say hello to Andrew. Glad you're joining me today. If you guys have any questions as we go through, please make sure you pop them into the chat. I'll do my best to answer them. Hello, Russ. Good to see you. All right. So our picture's loaded up here in Lightroom. Let's go down to the scenery category in our templates. Choose fast fix. That's looking pretty good. Let's say we want to do a couple of other quick edits. Let's go down to our structure tool and really pop this structure. I'm going to bring it up really high. And let's say at this moment, I'm really feeling that edit. I think it looks great and I click apply, and this is gonna take me back to Lightroom with those edits. Now the thing is, is maybe tomorrow or the next day down the road, what if I look at this edit and go, you know what? I think I made that structure a little too strong. Well, unfortunately, because we've taken this as a TIFF straight from Lightroom to Luminar and then back, those changes are now baked into that TIFF file. We can always go back and reprocess our raw, so it is non-destructive in that way, but you'd have to start over from scratch. There are a couple of other options of ways you can work around that, and I wanna show that to you today because if you have an image that you wanna edit quick, going straight from Lightroom to Luminar back to Lightroom is a great way to do that. But if you have a photo that you're really wanting to do some in-depth work on, and you have the Adobe Photography Plan, which means you have Photoshop as well, there's a quick workaround that I can show you to make that image re-editable. Let's go back over here to our original. And we've made those couple of raw adjustments here in Lightroom. What we're gonna do now is right click on our image and we're actually gonna go edit in Photoshop, but you're not gonna wanna open it directly in Photoshop. What I suggest is to go down and open as a smart object in Photoshop. And this is what's going to allow us to invoke the Luminar plugin from Photoshop and still have it be re-editable. And that's a really, really cool thing if this is a project that you're working on and you don't want to get all your edits done at once, or maybe you rethink something and you want to come back and make some changes. All right, so we brought our image up here in Photoshop, and you can see from this little icon right here, it's a smart object. So I'm going to go to Filter, go down to Skyland Software, and invoke Luminar AI here. So let's go ahead and let that load up. It's going to pull up the Luminar AI plugin and we'll do a couple of quick edits. So give it just a moment. And in this instance, because we've already applied some of those raw conversions in Lightroom, I'm gonna bypass our templates here and I'm gonna switch directly over to our edit panel. So let's say we go back to that structure tool and we're gonna pull this up really high again. So let's say we make that initial edit, we add a really high amount of structure and at the moment we think it looks great. We hit apply, we go back to Photoshop and we can even close that file and go back to Lightroom. So we're gonna do that because that's usually what happens, right? Is you take a, an image, you go through Photoshop, you close everything down. It's usually a day or two later. 
that you decide you want to make some changes. So what I'm going to do here is wait for that to render. Give that a second. There's all of our structure changes. I'm going to go ahead and save that file. Just Command S on my keyboard, or you can go to File, Save. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and close this file, so Command W, and then click back over to Lightroom. We'll give it a moment here to render, and we're going to end up with another copy of this image, a PSD file, here in our Lightroom library. So there it is. Here's the one we edited in Photoshop. Now let's say, now it's a couple of days later, we want to go back and make a few changes to this image. Because we did this in Photoshop using the Smart Object, it is completely re-editable. So we can go ahead and right-click on our edit, go to Edit In. This time we go straight up here to Edit in Photoshop. We want to make sure we choose Edit Original. If you choose Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments here, it's going to flatten that image and you're no longer going to have access to that Smart Object. So make sure you choose Edit Original and then click Edit. Hello Joyce, hello Joseph, glad you're able to join me today. All right, so let me go ahead and close up this little panel here. And we're back in Photoshop. Here's our layers, here's our smart filter. So let's say I want to go in and back up that structure and do a couple of other little quick changes. I'm just going to double click on Luminar AI here in that smart filter. It's going to relaunch Luminar and all of our sliders will be intact. We can move them around, make those adjustments without having to start from scratch, which is really, really cool. It does take a moment to load up, so this is a slightly longer workflow, but if you are working on something that's for your portfolio that you wanna spend some time on and really refine, it's very well worth the extra time. Okay, so let's go here to our structure, and let's pull that back a little bit because it did go a little over the top. And I want to darken down this side of the hill right here just to draw our eye into the main part of the photo. The really interesting stuff is, of course, the person here and this amazing uh, landscape right here. So let's go over here to Local Masking, add Basic, and I'm going to grab a gradient mask. I'm going to draw my gradient up from that bottom corner, right about like so. Let me pull that out a little bit farther. Everything in red will be affected. Everything not covered by the red overlay will be protected. And then I'm gonna just back off the exposure on that corner to really draw us into the image. And you can go through and do a few other edits. You could add a vignette. We could go back over here to our tools and go maybe down to a mystical, add a little bit of mystical here to the, to the shot. So just go through and refine this and all of our changes because they're part of that smart object, we can go back and change anytime we want. So now that we've made those changes, I can click apply and it'll take me back to Photoshop and I can then save that file and it'll round trip back to Lightroom. So just to kind of recap, the two options you have when working with Lightroom and Luminar as a plugin are to go direct from Lightroom to Luminar and back to Lightroom. It's a great, faster workflow for those images that you know exactly what you want to do and you need to kick things out quickly. But if you have a photo that you want to spend some time on, and you want to be able to come back to and refine later, by adding in Photoshop as that intermediary step, using that smart object workflow, you end up with something that's completely re-editable and gives you a ton more flexibility. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope this opens up a few more windows of opportunity for you in your workflow. If you have any questions, make sure you pop them into the comments below. I'll do my best to get those answered for you. And with that, I want to ask if you enjoyed this, make sure you give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next coffee break. Bye, everyone.